In today's show, I'm going to talk about what I call the Russian leg drag. It's a great way to set somebody up from the bottom position. So stay tuned. You'll see what I mean. Well, hi, everybody. I am Steve Scott, and welcome to another episode of Freestyle Judo. Hey, today's show, I'm going to look at what I named a long time ago the Russian leg drag, and it's really a, a good move I picked up in Sambo some years ago about how to drag a guy's leg out from underneath him and get him on his back and get him in real trouble. Uh, it is primarily a position, or a situation where you're fighting off your buttocks or your bottom nawaza, bottom guard position, and it is really effective. It is really effective. I don't see a lot of people doing it, uh, but they should be. And maybe if you watch the show, you'll be one of those people who will be converted to saying, hey, this, this stuff really works. It does really work. That's why I'm featuring it on today's show. Uh, so we'll, we'll be looking at six videos on that because I, I really take it from step A all the way out. It's, it's a really cool move. You'll like it. You'll see what I mean. So we're going to watch six videos of that on today's show. Then a little later... I'm going to discuss, uh, I'm going to kind of turn things around and discuss uh, Jigoro Kano's three culture principle of training, of, 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 of judo. And I mean, that's the total opposite thing from the doing a sambo type leg drag thing. Uh, but it's, it, I think it makes well round out for a good, interesting show. So we will talk about um, a very interesting subject to me and to a lot of people. Uh, Jigoro Kano's, one of the main basis points that he had, but focal points is, is being concepts, philosophies of Kodokan Judo. So we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But right now, let's talk about um, the Russian leg drag. And what it is, is if you are on your back and you're fighting off your buttocks and your backside and your opponent, uh, for whatever reason, will come up on one leg, he'll, he'll pop up on one knee. And you'll see when we, when we show it here in the basic one here, the, the basic explanation in a moment. A lot of times an opponent will come up on one leg, put, post one foot on the mat to maybe pass your guard or to maybe in sambo to start manipulating your, your leg, your body for some kind of a submission technique, generally a lower body submission. Or he's just a novice. He's just a beginner and he doesn't know any better and he wants to stand up. So that could be the situation. So in this first video, we're going to show the basis of or the basics of how to do a what I call a Russian leg drag. And the reason it's called a Russian leg drag is I saw it uh, in Sambo. And since Sambo is a Russian, you know, sport, it developed in the Soviet Union, the old Soviet Union in Russia. So I just named it the Russian leg drag, gave it a good name. It seems to suit for me. You can call it anything you want. But that's my nomenclature that I use. But anyway, the very first video are the, uh, an explanation of it and the basics of how to do the uh, Russian leg drag. And I think it's if I'm not mistaken, Mike Pennington, it's either Derek or Eric. I didn't look at it right away, but uh, Mike Pennington, I think, is the guy doing it here. So it's a minute, 24 seconds. So let's take a look at the basics of the Russian leg drag. It's called the Russian drag. It's a whole series of moves we've got. And uh, I first saw it, saw a Russian guy do it, so that's why I call it the Russian drag. So um, Mike's on his buttocks, and in a guard position or whatever, and if, if he stays low, it kind of depends on what Eric does, okay? So if Eric wants to pop up, he'll come up on this knee. Now, a couple reasons why he'll come up on the knee, or maybe several, but think of two right off the bat. One, he's not very skilled, and he does it to get a better base, okay? He could be a new guy and just comes up because he's more comfortable there. Or he has plans to maybe go back for a leg lock if that's, you know, included like, you know, Sambo or Jiu Jitsu. Okay. Or he might be wanting to pass Mike's leg past the guard. Okay. So there are some things he has a, he has a plan. But if he does come up on that knee, it could be the other one. We're working on this knee. And as soon as that knee comes up, okay, what Mike does, he kind of squirrels under there, he kind of turns under there, and he drags it. Okay, now what, that's the key, that's the actual drag itself. Let's look at that again. Okay, so as soon as Eric comes up, he drags it, he collapses on his butt. 
Now, there are a number of things he can do from here. Even though that was a short video, I think you got the idea of how to do that Russian leg drag, and it is an effective way to break him down. It, this is a classic breakdown from a stable to an unstable position. You're popping him on his butt, and now you're going to take advantage of him. So the next video is almost four minutes, and what it is, we are going to show how to use this leg drag action to roll it literally roll up use the momentum of this action of, of dragging his leg to come right up on top of him to apply a pin okay a pinning situation or sekomi type situation you know controlling for time and then once you do that how to ap actually spin into like a back roll application of jujigatami and it's it really does work this is a good ex a good technique so anyway next video um, basically, a Russian leg drag, how to pin them, and then spin up into a you know, work into a back roll jujigatami. So here we go. What the most obvious is, he's going to come right into a pin, right up on top, right into osakomi. If you're like an MMA fighter, you might do this. You come up with a mount or whatever, or BJJ. But for our purposes, we want to pull them for time. So, Mike, just go ahead and do the whole thing. Top, right up, and there he's got him, right there. Now, so Mike's winning. Stay there, guys. So Mike's winning, right? Now, depending, like like Eric was saying, come, come on, just a second. It depends on if, if Mike doesn't get that pin real quickly, that, that vertical Takeshi Hope, he might be pushing against him. Just push up against the shoulder, yeah. So he might be pushing away. If he's dumb enough to straighten his arms out, Mike's very willing to come over and take a Jujigatami. So, you know, if you get a quick submission that way. So let's look at that series. Let's do that where you come up and kind of push him away. Okay. He pops up, drags him, comes up, and he pushes away, spins right into Juju. Okay? Now, we're going for the pin initially. You know, the time hole, the osycomia. But if he doesn't, you know, if he pushes away, tries to avoid it, then, you know, he gave you the arm lock, he gave you his arm, take it from him. So let's look at it one more time. Let's look at the pin. The Osei Komi situation, he comes up, comes right up, covers him right, nice, Tate Shiho Gitami, right, all right. If he comes up, this time, not move back with the guys. Okay. Now, if he comes up, now watch him come up all the way into the Juji, if he pushes away, pushes away, swings right over. And a real quick note, when he does do the step over, guys, Mike doesn't get real high. He stays very compact with his body, very economy of movement, okay? So when Mike does come up and Eric's pushing away on the arms, with his arms, watch Mike's still still quite low. Everything's still bent, rolls over, and takes it. Don't sit up and, you know, like pop up. Be, stay as close as you can. Don't sit on his shoulder. Okay, one more time, Mike. We'll, we'll go to the pin first, then we'll go to the arm lock. Right to the pin. There's the other side coming. Learn that one first, okay? And then we can kick right over the arm. We good? Give that a try. Let's work on that a while. All right. We do this particular Russian drag. And we're going to go with a, with a rollback juji, the back roll juji. But watch this uh, before we were coming up and pinning it. But now, let's say we want to get that arm lock right away, okay, in this particular sense. We'll do another one in a bit with this sense here. So when Derek's going to come, Mike, yeah, come up on that one. When Derek drags him, pops him down, he comes up. And as soon as he comes up, he's really low and he stays, he's immediately going for that arm. And you notice he didn't sit up like, you know, like in a mount situation. Do it where you just sit up and do it wrong. Okay. And he just comes up and he sits up wrong. He's giving Mike too much space there. Okay? And then, yeah, you don't want to do that. See, see how clumsy that was on the, on the swing over and the, the roll back? He wants to do it with very compact. So when Mike comes up, he drags, he comes up, stays really round. See how? And then he comes right over and he goes right back. So as you saw the kind of sequence there, Derek was dragging with his right hand. And he's going to the opposite leg, to the opposite arm of Mike. So he rolls up, and look, you got the opposite. We got Mike's right arm. See that? And he rolls right into the juji. So that's another variation. If you don't want to pin him, you want to go right to the juji from here. Okay? 
Now that move you just saw really is effective and really does work. And, and a lot of people who use the Russian leg drag like that application because it puts you in a top dominant position. Uh, so even if you can't get the, uh, the the submission to finish it out, you're certainly on top of him and you're you're, you're beating him. So you're you're no longer on your back. You're you're on top of him winning. Okay, now let's look at this third video, and this really is pretty much the basic application of how to do jujigatami from the Russian leg drag. And you'll see you're collapsing your opponent. He's he's on his buttocks or side, uh, on his, his side flank, side leg there, and you. You'll be you'll be doing it sideways. Uh, you'll, be, you'll you're almost you don't roll him back onto his back. You stay sideways to him and, and really arches arches arm. You know stretch his arm from the from the side position. You'll see what I mean in a minute. It's a pretty basic application of it, but it really catches people cold. This is a really sneaky way to get Jujigatami. And in 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 the world of submissions, sneaky is good. So let's watch. It's a little about. It's right under two two minutes. Uh, so basic Russian leg drag to Jujigatami. So here we go. Let's look at the Russian drag here. We're going to go with two ways to get a juji here. We're going to go kind of a standard drag and take the arm lock from, from the, you'll see what I mean. And then we're going to do a head roll juji variation. So some of you guys might like that. So let's look at the very basic one first. When Derek comes up on that leg, Mike's going to drag it. There's the drag, the Russian drag. And no, don't go all the way over it, Mike. Just stay down. Just, just do the basic one. But, but there you go. Yeah. And he grabs and he takes it that way. Okay? Right, let's look at that again. Alright, so what's gonna happen? Barry's gonna come up here, Mike's gonna drag him, take it. Now, he'll come back. Just see how he's dragged here? See how he's kind of on his side? Mike's on his right hip. Okay? Now, he's extended. He's starting. He's Derek's thinking this. Mike's thinking this. Okay? He wants that arm. Now what he's gonna do, he's gonna come kick over the leg over the head and hook it tight and arch. And then he got it. Okay? So he's gonna do that's what that's what's happening here. Derek is totally thinking, oh my god, he's got my leg, and then all of a sudden, oh no, he's got my arm too. Now if you want to let go, Mike let go there So that's that's the, pretty much the basic view. Let's turn around a little more angle here. Now watch, Mike is really important. If he stays on his back, he's not going to make this happen. He's going to be on his hip. When he kicks over, there's the juice. He may have to roll back to catch it. That works. Okay, that works too. Now that really works. It is sneaky. It, it catches him on his side, and he just he, he all of a sudden he's tapping, and he what what hit me, you know? And that's really a good move. Now we're going to take this. Uh, a little more, a little further, because if your opponent does offer some fight and gives you more resistance, we want to create a little more moment momentum. To, so we'll, we'll, we'll start a rolling action to create a little more moment momentum to get what we end up doing, a head roll jujigatami from a Russian leg drag. So this next video is just slightly over three minutes, and we're going to show how to do a Russian leg drag. And if you collapse them and you want to keep rolling, gaining more momentum to do a head roll jujigatami. It, it's not, we're not doing it to be fancy, by the way. It really does work. So let's take a look at this uh, Russian leg drag to a rolling head roll jujigatami. Here we go. Now, let's work into the head roll version. You come up and you like it a little bit. So he drags. Now watch, he comes up, look at the foot over the head, he keeps rolling, he just keeps rolling, rolling, rolling. He rolls him right over to the Gigi. He did that slow so we could demo. We're going to do it more with advancing speed, guys. So watch, here's the whole movement. There you go. It's a constant roll, so he might bury down trying to get away from it. That's the case, you follow him. And watch when Mike does this, he his, his left leg on the back of Derek's head, kicks over. Try to, try to work like the instep, that's what Mike's doing, he's trying to work the instep on the back of Derek's neck there, okay? One time he's going to pop up, 
on the cross, yeah, and he keeps rolling in that direction, and he kicks over to finish off. There you go. Be sure you kick that leg over the head to finish, because he will roll out of it if you don't. All right? Does that make sense to everybody? I want to show your variation for that, too. Just switch places there once you get You'll roll to the sandy side of the camera. Pops up. He's going to do it a little bit different. See, he rolls over the head and catches it. He's over there. That's okay, too. I like to hit, but Derek's found this works better for him in his practice. And he'll keep rolling over, and he's already got it there. Did you see the difference? Okay, let's look at that one more time. When Derek catches, he's looping the leg over the head already, and he's catching the roll, and he has to really, he's using a little more of that right hand on that leg, a little more dependent there to drag him over. That's how that one works too. So either way works. It worked quite well. It's totally unexpected on the top guy's part because he's popping up again. One of you guys come up, does matter who. What if Mike is if Mike is if he comes up on one leg, he, he does it for a reason, right? He's either passing guard, he's gonna yeah, do something there, no, he's going to uh defense there. Or he might just be coming up, he doesn't know what else to do, he's just posting to get the base. Okay? And, or he might be actually, uh, you know, like I said, pet, or he's going for a leg line, like headed there for a pass guard. So he's coming up for a reason. You either catch a really good guy or you catch a guy who's not so good. The guys aren't so good just coming up because they don't know what else to do. And they often get caught like this. Okay? You double one more time. This is just the way you do it, Derek. Catch it, roll it over. Keep rolling over and catch it there. It looks like, how does that work, but it does. It's a really, really cool move. You don't see it very often, guys. You just don't. And so you be the guy doing it on somebody else and say, what do you hit me with? Gonna... Again, I want to stress that uh, that application, that head roll juji, it, it it, it looks cool because it is. It's a lot of fun to do, but it's also um, it's it's effective. I mean, you know, I, there, there's some there's some good solid fundamentals behind that. It really does work. That that rolling action uh, over the direction of his head, one, it totally fools him, and it it gains momentum as you roll. So there you go. That does work. Okay, this next one, <clears throat> we are going to uh, look at uh, Derek is is, t is teaching this with uh, Vlad Kim, one of our uh, students who now is back down in Kazakhstan, but he trained with us when he was over here in the States for a couple of years. Um, but it's a Russian leg drag to a triangle choke, to Sankaku Jume. This really does work. This is a sneaky move. It is a great way to set a guy up for Sankaku Jume. It's slightly over a five-minute video, but it's worth it. I think you will really enjoy, if you're a Sankaku guy or gal, and you're really good at triangles, I think you'll like this. So anyway, let's, without further ado, let's look at a Russian leg drag to Sankaku Jume, the triangle choke. So here we go. Okay, so we're going to go over a, uh, a Russian drag to counter a, a sit-up um, or a stand-up out of your triangle. So the idea being he's going to try and pick me up. So if I pop free, and I lock in my triangle. In most sports, if he picks me up off the ground, okay, <clears throat> we get a mate, stop situation. If it's self-defense, he slams me on the ground. Okay, so the next step from there is catch the triangle, and then as soon as the leg comes up, you hook. Okay, and what this will do is it's pretty static, but it, it keeps him from being able to lift, lift me up. Going through here, okay? okay, at the very least, it's about as high as we get, okay? So that's usually enough to stop it in sport from getting called, okay? And it's definitely enough to stop it from him trying to spike me. But I'm still kind of fighting for control here. So usually you have to still come back and then lock it up and then you get the tap out, okay? Now what we're gonna do is be a little bit more aggressive with this. Okay, so we're gonna apply what we call a, a Russian drag. Uh, basically what's gonna happen as soon as he gets a foot flat on the floor, I'm gonna drag it up to my ear. And what that's going to do is cause him to, to plop back down on his butt. Okay, so we catch. Okay, so you see I just drug that leg right up to my ear. He's stuck right here. I catch both the arm and the leg, and then we just squeeze. And if we need to, we can even apply <laughs> double trouble. He's tapping. Yeah, there he's tapping. <laughs> Poor guy was tied up. He, he could not tap. Poor Vlad. 
Okay, so one more time through. Again, so shut through, catch the triangle, and down we go. And he even beat me to the punch a little bit there. But you'll notice as soon as I caught that and drug it up to my ear, now he's down on his side. Okay, and in this case, my feet aren't entirely caught. So what I can do instead is catch the wrist, point that thumb away from me, and then pop in, or we can push it over that way and then finish the choke. And basically we just sit up and squeeze. Derek, can you point out the, the side you're doing it, the, the leg over the neck, you're doing the drag on the other side. Right. So, right. so if the knot of my feet are on this side, that's where I'm dragging, okay? I don't want to try and drag on both sides, okay? You pick one side and you go for it. So the best way is to go away from it. So if I catch here, and he comes up. Okay, now, see how my feet are much tighter? Okay, and we've rolled to where the knot's on the floor and I can finish pretty easy on my side. Before, when I was going on the same side as the knot of my feet, okay, I'm not gonna be able to shrimp into it. You can notice already the body mechanics are a little bit weird. But if the knot's on this side and I go up to the foot on this side, it's a natural curve into. I have a lot more power to it. So one more time through, catch, and down we go. Okay, and again, finish with the arm bar if you have to. Now sometimes, uh, I've seen you guys, you, you, I've seen you choke uh, competitors or you're, you know, a, f a fighter in a, it's, it's a judo tournament. The guy you actually was sitting on his butt when you finish it, he was just sitting on his haunches. Can you kind of, sure. if, if Vlad can replicate that. So the, the more ballistic you get with it, the easier it is to pop him on his butt. So as soon as I get this and that foot comes up, there he goes. Okay. Now that he's there, it's pretty easy since I'm still on my back and not on my side to re-triangle my legs. And if I have to, I'll reach up and uh, do what we call the, the necktie. I'll grab the shin on the inside of my other knee. Okay, so right in there, okay. You'll, oops, sorry. You'll notice that now that if, he, if I do unlace it and he tries to put his foot up, I still have control. He might get his arm out of there, but the idea is I can pull down now and really crunch into him. So and that's often an ideal situation because I have seen you do that in judo competitions before. We just put him flat on his butt, and you you have you've given yourself some time to to really tie in tighter with right. your triangle. And he's he's pretty much stuck there. He can kind of roll over to the side, but that's almost even worse for him because then I'm going to go belly down on an arm. Guys, wh why we like this because you start your triangle. You, you don't give him any out if you do the Russian drag. You pop him back down. He's sitting on his buttocks. He's no longer on a stable base. Right. He's he's one's legs extended. He's kind of stuck. And that's what we that's what we have. One more time, and then we will let everybody drill on this because this is a great move. We want to drill on it. And there's your drag. All right, you saw that that I mean that really does work. I've I've seen several of my guys use that in competition, um, and it's uh, with, with great effect. It, great effect. It really really does work. And even if it doesn't, the triangle choke doesn't work right away. He's still set up for a, you know, stretching his arm for a jujigatami. So he's really in a double trouble situation where he can roll him, sit, sit right up on him as we showed and, and pin him too. So he's, he's in trouble. It's a great setup, great way to use the Russian leg drag into a Sankaku Jume. Re reasonably safe for you when you apply it from the bottom position, by the way. So a good, good rate of success there. All right, the last video in the lineup of six is a, this is straight Sambo here. A Russian leg drag to a straight leg lock, a, a knee bar. And this is classic Sambo, and this is, may have been the reason, I don't know, may have been the reason this, this, the Russian leg drag setup was even invented because it really lends directly into stretching a guy's leg out, rolling him over, and, and getting a, a knee bar. So it is almost, well, it was 2 minutes 40 seconds, and we're going to be showing here how to do a Russian leg drag into a straight leg lock or knee bar. So here we go.
okay? Like Steve said, I'm not gonna drag weight out here because look where his knee is pointing, that way. I gotta, I gotta point my pelvis opposite his knee. And in order to do that, I have to go full 180 degrees. I don't wanna do that, I wanna go 90 degrees, okay? So instead, I'm gonna drag him and keep my hands nice and tight, okay? I should be able to like tap my hand with it, okay? And that way when I come over, see how tight that is? Okay. Yep. Yeah, well, that is double trouble. Knee, knee, knee lock and, and arm lock together. Pop that out, drop my knee, kick over, and see where it goes. Even if I lose his arm, he's right there. If I keep his arm, then it's literally double trouble. I'm gonna go this way. Okay. Okay. Drag that over. Kick over, and see how I can just pull him right in there. Yeah. Okay. It's super, super tight, and your knees don't have to be perfect. They're in, which makes this possible. If it was straight, I wouldn't be able to bar them. Like, I just straighten my knee now. Notice also, guys, Eric's or Derek's yeah. on his right hip. He's not on his back. By being on his hip, he has more. He can arch his hips a lot when I'm, more violently, actually, a lot, lot harder. When I'm here, I can go all the way over that way. When I'm here. I have to literally push him and me up, right? Okay, when I'm down, I've got my weight in, so it makes it worse. I like either down, like belly down, or to the side. Usually it's the side for me because I can arch way back and really get him. And it's a lot easier when you're rolling because people naturally don't want to go belly down. So, <clears throat> one more time, keep this nice and tight. Let's go that way, okay? I got, I got this nice and low, drop my knee, pop that over, keep a hold of his arm, and just pull him in, okay? Because I have a hold of his hand, it's right in between my, you know, right there, he's stuck, and I can literally pull his leg in between my legs and just bridge. So I hope I have convinced you today that that Russian leg drag works. It really does. You can set up just about any type of submission technique that you want from that position, from that setup position. Um, so anyway, the Russian leg drag has a lot of merit. Not a lot of people do it. And again, I think a lot of people should. And I hope by watching this video, it'll prompt you to say, I'm going to jump on the mat and give that a try because it really is worth trying. It's a, it's a great technique. So, so, so much for the Russian leg drag. By the way, we have lots of videos on our YouTube channel about the Russian leg drag because we like it so much. So, um, um, you know, tune in to our YouTube channel and, and, and be sure to watch a lot of our videos on the Russian leg drag. So there we go. Okay, let's talk about, let's kind of switch gears, actually. Let's talk about now uh, Jigoro Kano, the founder of Judo, Professor Kano. Um, as you know, he started, he founded the Kodokan in 1882, and he revolutionized the world, certainly, of martial arts. Okay, um, Kano's biggest contribution in, in his mind, I, I believe, I've read a lot about him by a lot of different authors, is that... Uh, what we're going to talk about here, the, his three culture principle that really separates, uh, just my notes here, the three culture principle was the first of its kind in Japanese jiu-jitsu. It really was. No one in the, in the Japanese fighting arts uh, even thought this way, to my knowledge. And it, this is what really set the Kodokan Judo, this philosophic basis, set it apart from the other older feudal jiu-jitsu systems and also established it uh, to be a, a launching pad for a variety of martial art disciplines, you know, ba based on Judo, based on the, the principles of Judo. And so th this was a, a brilliant thing that Kano did. And, and by doing this three-culture principle, which I will explain here, the three, the three parts of it that, that he talked about, um, it, it truly made judo a, a method of physical education. It wasn't just a fighting sport. It wasn't just some basic, uh, you know, philosophical type thing. It was a practical, physical, you know, adaptation of, of developing good, cor uh, you know, um, character building and that type of thing. So Kano was first and foremost a physical educator. And that's what he takes the pride. He took the pride in being the father of Japanese physical education. He was also known as the father of Japanese sport 
because he was the guy that got uh, Japan into the Olympic Committee and got him involved in the Olympic movement. And so he, he was a, a monumental figure in the early part of the 20th century, late part of the 19th century, certainly, in, <clears throat> in the field of physical education and sport, and, and also in culture in general, in Japanese culture especially. So let's look at Kano's three culture principles, okay? And again, these, these make it what it is, is that make judo the physical education it is. And the first one is called rentaiho, rentaiho. And it's, you know, it's, it's uh, pro- pro- producing a physically sound body, I guess is the best way to put it, okay? This is the physical education of judo. This is what makes judo physical education his rentaiho, his, his principle of, of this, this um, the studying the body, studying the, the movements of the body, almost like kinesiology, you know, biomechanics. Um, but judo is physical education. So that was the first one he wanted most importantly to everyone to do, the rentaiho, okay? The next one is the shushinho, shushinho, which is the mental and character development of a human being. You know, he kind of wanted judo to be more than just a fighting art, uh, just a martial art. It is just something more than defeating an opponent. He's quoted as saying, and it's kind of a paraphrase here, uh, Kano is, is said, if a person does not benefit society, his existence is in vain. Pretty important stuff, really. And it's, it really focuses in on Kano's belief at how important character development is in judo, is in Kodokan judo. So it's not just who's the toughest guy in the room. Uh, this, this is the type of stuff that keeps judo from being a predator thing, from just a bunch of thugs beating on each other. Who's the toughest guy in whatever gym he's in, picks on the weakest guy or anybody else he can beat, and then, you know, then he goes on to other things. This is the type of thing that makes judo more than a sport. Okay, and I think that's, we, all, we always hear, well, judo's more than a sport. Well, yes, it is. It's because Kano designed it that way. Okay, it's not just a physical sporting activity. There's more to it. Okay, and this is this is clearly this the second principle, the Shu Shin Ho, it really keys in on that in combination with the Rin Tai Ho of the physical education, the training the body uh, to be sound and, and you know uh, vigorous. And the third aspect of his three culture principle is the Shobu Ho. Shobu is like fighting. Okay, it's like a contest. It's a serious contest. And in that, Kano implicated or implied that um, it's a sporting activity, sporting aspect of it, the randori, the shiai, the the contest activity, but also using judo uh, as a fighting sport, as as a fighting activity, self-defense. You know, use it to your benefit when you need to. Uh, So it, it rounds it out. It's a three culture principle. It's uh, physical education, it's character development, and it's sporting and self-defense application. So that's the three culture principle of Jigoro Kano's Kodokan Judo. And again, that's what makes Judo not just a sport. So there we have that. That was just a brief analysis of it. There's a lot more to be said. I would highly recommend um, Don Draeger's books. Uh, I I think he he had a series of three books by uh, Weatherhill Publications, Weatherhill Publications, I should say. And the third one is the, um, um, going on memory here, uh, uh, the modern modern Budo and Bujitsu arts of Japan. The third one, and he he goes into some pretty good detail there in that book about um, the three culture principle. And there are other parts too, other places that discuss it as well. But but I think Dreger did a wonderful job in describing it. So if you, if you do want a book on, to read more about that, I would recommend uh, Dreger's book as well. So, so that is the show for today. I tried to make it interesting. It's certainly a, a different type of approach to first. It was kind of a Russian Sambo stuff. And, and then we switched gears and went to a more traditional look at Kodokan Judo. But uh, that's what I do to try to make it interesting. So, hey, thanks so much for tuning in, and I will see you next time. Mm-hmm.